Welcome to the For Your Thoughts podcast, where psychology, pop culture, and self meet. I'm joined here by Adele. Can you let me know how to pronounce your last name? Spargon? Sure. Spragon. Rhymes Spragon. with dragon. Spragon. Please Adele Spragon. Um, I feel like every, I know you've gotten the Adele joke a million times before. Like Adele, the singer. Yeah. <laughs> and, Hello. And, yeah. And she's an album. So I'm like, everyone's going to be like, oh, is this Adele, Adele? But it's like, this is a better Adele, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Adele is an award winning author, thought leader, and international speaker and trainer. She was awarded the 2020 Woman of Inspiration Award and was recognized as a, as a top behavioral expert of the year in 2021, which is amazing. Like the top, that, that's like, that's a lot. Like how, how does that, how, how do you even get to that point, you know? Um, so her book Shift is uh, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment and has won multiple awards. Her book helps people on how to set and achieve their goals after decades of feeling stuck in patterns and procrastination, avoidance and quitting. Um, and yeah, so like I said before, a lot of creatives get stuck in a lot of different patterns. And I really love how you kind of break everything down in a practical way that makes sense we kind of hear a lot of like um you know just set your goals and just do that but it's like kind of like how really do we do that um so I would love to know more about you first like so I always ask people who they were who they are now and like you know what they're trying to do for their future and the future of humanity so we can start there and then roll it (laughs) all right yeah sounds great Mm -hmm. you want me to start yeah Mm -hmm. who am I or who was I who, who like I? who were like yeah who, who were you who are you and then who you plan to be and who you plan you know like what what do you bring to the world or, or continue to bring to the world yeah okay so um well penny i've been in the personal development industry for gosh over 30 years now so i started very much coaching the way that i was taught to mm-hmm. achieve mindset right or achieve goals and that was Uh, set a goal and then determine the steps to get to that goal. If you're not taking those steps, there's something off with your mindset. Let's correct that. And then there's no reason why you shouldn't achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. And I believe this wholeheartedly. I was totally invested in that. The problem was, is it didn't work for me. In fact, Benny, I I was quitting business after business. I quit three businesses. I walked away from them. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was having panic attacks. It didn't matter how much positive thinking and affirmations I did. It was not supporting me. Um, if I upset anybody, I had a terrible people pleasing pattern. And if I had upset anybody, I would be distraught for a week. You know, it was mm-hmm. that bad. Right, right. And so, you know, I, I, I finally, after I had done this to myself for 15 years, I finally, I thought to myself, surely it can't be solely my fault. There's got to be something else that's going on. So I enrolled in university. I, my son was in kindergarten at the time and I thought, all right, I'm going to go figure this out. And I enrolled in university to work on what's going on in the human mind. How do Mm -hmm. we make decisions, right? I graduated with my master's and a whole lot of more information about the human equation. And I saw, yes, we are using the wrong operating instructions, I like to say. Mm-hmm. So I created new ones. I created operating instructions that actually lead to our goals. And I started teaching it. I've been teaching it for 10 years. And it's based in the brain's patterning and how to change those underlying patterns that lead to action, behavior, belief. Mm-hmm. When I started down that path and I started teaching it, um, in little in-house surveys, we get an 87% success rate. The wow. difference between that and what's happening on the market, which is typically around 20, 25%, is night and day, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter what the person's trying to achieve, whether it's weight loss or a business like I was, 87% succeed in achieving their goals, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's a, I want to, break it down again into something like practical. So um, you mentioned weight loss, which is one habit that I see people always wanting to do. They start a diet, they quit. They say like, it's, it's always like um, every Monday, it's like, okay, I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to start on Monday. I'll start on Monday. So maybe um, if you can apply that and then we can get into your four step process and how that would work and just how it all makes sense. Yeah. So th- let's go through the new operating instructions and right. we'll do it 
for somebody who's trying to lose weight. We'll just look mm -hmm. at it that way, right? Mm -hmm. So the new operating instructions are this. Set the goal. Determine where you want to get to, okay? Don't make it too specific and measurable, though, right? So don't say, like, I want to lose 20 pounds by Tuesday, which is typically right. what exactly. we do. Yeah. Diet, right? or, or I'm okay. going to work out every single day at 5 a.m. Oh, yeah. and do a hard hit. It's like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So, so let's set the goal. Like I want to be healthy and I want to fit into my clothes better and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question is not, how do I get to that goal? The next question is why am I not at that goal today? Mm -hmm. now, that's a very different question. And what you'll find is that what starts to arise is a whole bunch of beliefs, a whole bunch of behaviors and a whole bunch of actions that are preventing you from getting to that goal. Great. That is, that is the, under each one of those actions, behaviors, beliefs, there runs a brain pattern, which is giving rise to that action, behavior, belief. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I have a quick question. Yeah. So, um, so after you, so let's say, okay, I'm, um, I'm not working out or whatever. And I kind of put in there, maybe I'm going out too much. So in the morning I can't work out. So you write those little things down that are stopping you from doing that. And do you just start canceling those out like those one by one or is that I'm what you're so gonna go happy that, I'm so happy Penny that you came up with that example because okay. <laughs> <laughs> because what we need to do is we need to stop thinking about what's the solution and we have to start asking ourselves what is the problem so right. what you just said is a solution I'm not waking I'm not waking up in time because I go out at night therefore if I just stop going out at night then I'll be able to work out Mm -hmm. early work, wake up and work out okay, right fabulous. that's actually a solution to the problem the real problem is I'm not working out now that's different right because you might work out in the morning you might work out at five o'clock you might go for a walk after dinner like there's no rules then for when you have to work out and what working out looks like okay mm -hmm. so identifying the problem is key so and tricky, as, as you can see, right? right. So the brain's always looking for solution. So, right. So if we set the goal, okay, I want to lose, you know, 20 pounds or just feel better, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm not working out. Great. You're just going to write that down. So one of the actions is I don't work out. So the other thing might show up for you is, oh, you know what? You know, I, I'm menopausal, so I'm just going to take me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm almost 60. Like, you know, menopausal women have struggles to lose weight. Good. That's another belief. You're going to write that down. right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that you start to identify all these actions, behaviors, beliefs that start to show up. Okay. Now, how I'd like you to think of your brain is like an iceberg. At the top of the water is all your actions, all your behaviors, all your beliefs. Everything that a person does, feels, thinks is at the top of that iceberg. Under the water is where the brain patterns lie. So when we think about this brain of ours, the easiest way to think about it is like it's it's inside this house, this bony skull. Right. It has no access to the outside world. It's dark in here. It's silent in here. There's no touch. There's no taste. There's nothing in here mm -hmm. except these electrical impulses. Right. All right. So information is streaming in through our senses. We see a cookie, right? And we right. think, oh, I want to eat that cookie, you know, but, but we're not actually relating to that cookie. We're actually relating to a brain pattern that says we want to eat the cookie. That's different. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we can start to see it like that, it's like, oh, OK, I'm working on the wrong thing. I'm biting my lip, trying not to eat the cookie. Like, you know, instead, why don't I just remove the pattern that wants the cookie? Right. Let's just take that out of the brain. No, I don't have a problem with that cookie. Put cookies in front of me. I don't <laughs> care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I used to be, I used to drink red wine every single night. I thought mm -hmm. I was addicted. I mean, I, mm -hmm. if, if you had seen me, you would say, okay, Adele's addicted to red wine. Like mm -hmm. that's how people would relate to me, right? Mm -hmm. So I did what I always do. I repatterned it. I took that pattern away. Today, you can put a bottle of wine in front of me. I, I'm not tempted in mm -hmm. the slightest. Like mm -hmm. it's, I just have no relationship to wine because I don't have a brain pattern for one. Mm -hmm. So how does one, so you recognize the beliefs and you recognize um, all of that, but how does one actually actively break that pattern? 
<laughs> great question. Yeah. So that's where my book comes in. So the mm -hmm. four steps to repatterning, the four steps are outlined in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, the four steps I can just briefly go through them. And they, you know, it's very helpful though to take one step at a time and do one step for a week and then the next step for a week and then the next step for a week as you're learning the technique. Once you have the technique, it's like having the tool in your pocket and you can just use it anytime you need it. Okay, mm -hmm. but as you learn it, it's helpful to slow it down and take it one step so the brain gets used to repatterning itself. Mm -hmm. So the four steps are as follows. First, we identify the pattern. So what we just did was we identified the top of the iceberg, the action behavior belief. But a pattern lies under the water. So I'm going to give a definition of a pattern. A pattern is an intertwined physical sensation, emotion, and thought. When the three aspects of our being come together, they give rise to an action or behavior belief. Mm -hmm. So to identify the pattern, we need to identify, okay, there's the cookie. What am I feeling? Where am I feeling that? And what is the thought? Mm -hmm. So the thought might be, wow, I really crave that cookie. The emotion might be desire. Mm -hmm. And the physical sensation might be a rumbling in the stomach, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Great. That's a sign of a pattern. So that would be step one. Mm -hmm. The next step is, like I said, the brains inside this bony skull, we're actually not relating to the cookie. We're relating to this pattern. So we need to flip that switch and we just own it as a pattern. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's step two. We're going to, we're going to own it as a pattern, not as a cookie. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. It's not okay. the cookie. It's a pattern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the third step is to deconstruct. And that means to, we're going to tease apart the connection the intertwining between that physical sensation, that emotion, that thought, because mm -hmm. it's that intertwining that gives rise to the action. So we're mm -hmm. going to put those three aspects of our being back separated into their respective place. Mm -hmm. And that's tricky to understand. But when you read the book, it makes sense. Right. And then the fourth step is we're going to create a new pattern. And the brain actually has already done that for you. That mm -hmm. step's the easy step mm -hmm. because our brain is always rewiring itself. It wants to rewire itself. Mm -hmm. There is only one problem on this planet, and that's that nobody has taught us how to work the brain effectively. Right. So are you saying that once you recognize those three, it's kind of like almost inevitable that the pattern is like going to change? Exactly. So right. once you've done steps one through three, the brain automatically... Nature abhors a vacuum. Has everybody heard that saying? Mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. it just won't live with nothing. So it will automatically just keep doing whatever it knows to do. That's the problem when we have an existing pattern. We just keep taking the same action over and over and over again. And it's right. not our fault, right? Like, okay, latest finding in neuroscience is super exciting. And at the same mm -hmm. time can sound a little scary when you first hear it. Mm -hmm. If we hook somebody's brain up to a brain scanner, that brain scanner would be able to see every action that that person is going to take before the person knows they're going to take that action. Yeah. Action is originating in the unconscious regions of the brain. And then the conscious mind just catches up to what the brain is or the, the action the person is already taking and going, I want to do that. I want to eat that cookie. No, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You're, you're already in motion towards that cookie before you even notice the cookie is there. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we back up the truck? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to back that train down the track when it's already rolling. Right. That's really hard. And that's why control does not work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't. Yeah, most of the time, like um, when you make a bad decision, it's like after you've made it, you're kind of like, dang, and, you, and you're really trying to figure out like, and especially if you've gone to therapy and you feel like you've actively done all of these things and you're healed and all this stuff, but then you're placed back in that situation and you do the same thing over again, you're like, God damn it. Like, you're like, oh my God, like I thought that I knew better, but when you're placed in that situation, it's a whole nother story. That's what this is reminding me of. This actually happened to me. That's why I'm saying that like, like last weekend, actually, it's like, um, of course I've been in therapy. I was in Kenya for about three months. So I haven't really, you know, seen people or whatever the case may be, um, go on a date. And I feel like the same pattern that I've been working to break just happened again. And, and it's kind of crazy. Cause I just knew that I was just like, I'm healed. I'm that girl. And this is not happening again. And it did. And I was beating myself up so much for it because I just 
thought that it couldn't, but it's because I wasn't even placed in that, in that situation again to, to test it. And I guess I didn't destruct all of those pieces and, and I guess refresh myself of that, you know, um, before. So that yeah, makes you sense. got yeah. it. You, you, <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely how patterns work. Yeah. So, so, but here's the thing patterns are only trying to keep us safe right? Mm. So we're not born with patterns. We're not like other animals. Other animals are born with instincts. They know exactly what to do. They enter this world and they need very little guidance in order to do it. Okay. Right. Human mm -hmm. beings are born yeah. blank slate. You got to learn everything. So from the moment that you're born, your brain is very quickly trying to piece together patterns in order to know what action to take. So when you were little, and you're going through this world, every, every situation that you face, your brain takes the action that you just took and stores it for future use. And it goes, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. Now, when I encounter a similar situation, your brain thinks it goes, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just use that action. That's exactly right. what's happening. Okay. So you're in on this date and it's using a pattern from the past that's not actually aligned with the current situation. And then we beat ourselves up from taking that action, but mm -hmm. that action has already been taken by the unconscious regions of the brain. Right. So there's no blame or shame in mm -hmm. repatterning. Um, you know, I like to say there's nothing to fix, absolutely nothing to fix. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is reflect back and go, oh, that didn't work. Wow, I thought I'd repattern that. And here it is again. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now you've got the four step tool in your pocket you're going to apply that to that mm -hmm. action whatever you just did and once you've removed the pattern that action will never arise again mm -hmm. I never have to fight red wine I just right. don't have a pattern for it right that's mm -hmm. the difference so um I guess I think I know the answer to this um like avoiding environments or avoiding um people that bring about certain negative patterns or toxic patterns is that a smart thing to do or is it a better thing to face them head on you know until you fix the pattern right. when it comes okay. to healing Great and question. when it comes to just being better yeah yeah oh I love that question if you don't have a way to repattern then avoiding is your best option right okay that's number one so if, if you don't know anything about the brain and how it works, and you've got no way to remove that action because the brain is taking that action, then yes, avoiding absolutely, right? Make sure the conditions around you are aligned with your current patterns. If on the other hand, you know how to repattern, then every situation that you face that doesn't work, it's like Yahoo, because now right. I can see the pattern and I got a tool in my pocket yeah. to deal with it and Yahoo, bring it on, right? Yes. So we stop avoiding, we start actually dancing through life because it's like, sure. Yeah, I, I can take You're just getting Go. better and like breaking yeah. down the iceberg, it, like yes. literally yeah. to the core. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's just chip away at it until we have all these optimal patterns that we're running on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I like to say happiness is your birthright. Like for everybody sure. has the right for fundamentally to feel joy. And that's what the brain is actually trying to achieve all the time. It's, it's, it's in a state of joy when mm -hmm. it's optimally aligned with what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think that like, okay, whether it's a family member or friend, um, someone, or even if you're married or in a close relationship and you are aware of your patterns that might be negatively impacting the relationship. Is that something you bring about or talk about, especially if that person maybe isn't into all this or like if, or is that something that you just like own to yourself and like take the L and keep it, keep it pushing, you know? Yeah. And, another and, great and, question. And if you were to explain that to somebody, how would you even go about, go about that? You know, especially if you care about this person. Right. That's right. a great question. So um, I work with individuals and I work with couples. I have a program where they just go from, I'm, I'm going to, I hate you. I want to divorce you. <laughs> yeah. to, oh, oh, you're the love of my life. And it literally happens within eight weeks. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So how does that happen? If you have two people who are working on their own pattern, it, it's, it's, it's goes much faster. Okay, mm -hmm. but let's say that there's only one person and they're working on their patterns and the other person is just doing their thing. 
So let's think about this. Remember I said that this brain of ours is locked inside this bony skull. It has no access to the outside world. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Penny, are you seeing me? Mm -hmm. You think it seems like we are actually seeing each other and relating to each other, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. from the moment I came on this call, your brain had to very quickly piece together a pattern in order to know what to say and how to act, right? Right. And it's that pattern that you keep relating to. And I keep relating to my pattern for you. So my brain very quickly formed a pattern for Penny. Right. Taking everything that I knew from my past and everything that I that no right, right now. Mm -hmm. No right now, in order to congeal into a pattern that I can now take action with. Okay. Perfect. Right. So between every person and another person, there lives that person's pattern. Mm -hmm. If we know that, right, then it's really easy to interact on a very different level. It's like, oh, okay, wow, I'm seeing that you said X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. My pattern is reacting in this way, right? I'm getting angry because, boy, am I triggered right now. If you know that's a pattern that's triggered, you get to deconstruct that. Now, what is going to happen then? Now you've removed that pattern for this other person. I deconstruct my pattern for Penny and I just don't have a pattern anymore. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is where I very quickly have to create a new pattern. Right. And you show up brand new to me. Mm -hmm. You do things that surprise me. Right. Right. Wow, I didn't know that Penny was like yeah. that. Like, yeah. wow, I wasn't expecting that. Right? Yeah. And I, it seems to me like you've changed. No, I, my pattern for you has changed. Right. That's why you show up differently. Right. And that's kind of like, you know, when people give advice, they're kind of like switch it up or just do something different. Or in that case, this is like a better way of saying it um, and a practical way that is actual science. You know, it's kind of like, just like do better, switch it up. And yeah, like that's, that makes sense. That makes a yeah. lot of sense actually. And that's yeah, because that'll help rewire their pattern as well. Cause you guys won't have that same thing that y'all are safe and comfortable in anymore. You got it. You got it. Right. So you change your pattern for the other person, right? You're also changing your reaction to that pattern at the same time. So say, say that you did something and I got triggered every time you did it. And every time you did it, I would say the same sentence, right? And right. you and I are back and forth in this same action happening over and over again. Okay, I change my pattern. You show up brand new. I go, oh my gosh, I never heard Penny say that before, right? Now right. I'm reacting differently to you and that forces you to have to change your pattern and react back differently. Wow, to that's me. so simple. It's kind of crazy how simple it really is. <laughs> it's like, dang, why didn't we think of this before? <laughs> it's so easy. I know this is the thing. Like when I got it, I went, oh, this is brilliant. Like we don't have to work on anything. There's nothing to right. fix. We yes. don't have to communicate better, right? I only right. have to know what's not working for me. I only have to say that it doesn't work for me. I don't have to worry really about whether it works for you, but let me, let me just explain what I just said, okay? <laughs> if it doesn't work for anybody, if there's a conflict in the situation, then it's not actually working for me. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I get to look from a very self position, a very selfish position, you could almost say, and say, wow, I'm really unhappy inside the conflict. I get to own that as my pattern. I get mm -hmm. to remove that pattern. You get to be happy along for the ride. Mm, right. <laughs> so, exactly. Right? Right. And there's so much joy in that. It's and like, there's so oh, much joy. Yeah. Good. And <laughs> there's this thing it's called like kind of like being the main character in your life. And it just makes life 10 times better um, for yourself and others when you show up that way. So that yeah. makes so much sense. What would you say is like um, a main negative pattern that you see that you've seen amongst um, maybe family dynamics and like mar married dynamics, like a top one that is just really common that you see that you're just like, let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's one very, very common pattern was identified by Stephen Cartman in the 1960s. And that is the Cartman Triangle, it's called. It's the triangle of rescuer, persecutor, victim. Have you heard this triangle? Mm, I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So if you, in, in many families, in fact, forget families, it, it, it occurs between countries, it occurs between um, 
um, government bodies, it occurs in politics, you'll see this triangle everywhere once I identify it for you. Mm -hmm. If you put a triangle upside down, so that the point is at the bottom, mm -hmm. left hand corner, put the word for rescuer, right hand corner, put the word persecutor, bottom corner, put the word victim. Mm -hmm. okay? In any conflict, you're going to see these three roles arising. Okay, mm -hmm, and people mm -hmm. move around these roles. Cartman called it rapid switching. And the faster you can move around those three roles, the more confusion you create and the more conflict gets created. Mm -hmm. The rescuer is the person who moves in and wants to protect the victim. So, you know, mothers will often do this with children. So the father is having a, a, an argument with the child saying, you need to do your homework. The mother will rush in and say, oh, it's okay, honey. I told them that they could just watch TV for an hour. Okay, great. The roles are the father is acting like the persecutor, right? Mm -hmm. The child is the victim, the one who needs to be rescued. The mother comes in and rescues. But they, you'll keep moving around this, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now the father thinking, oh, gosh, now I look like the bad guy. He right. moves into the victim, right? And he'll right. say something like, why are you always protecting the kids, right? Okay, great. So, and the mother will then move into the to victim, victim right? Right. And, and a lot it? of the times the kid will go to the rescuer for the mom. Sure. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. It's okay, mama. We'll do our homework. It's okay. You know, yeah. trying to rescue the mother and, and this Very triangle just it creates so much conflict. Mm -hmm. So as pattern makers, we use that car, that triangle, but only to identify it. Right. The beautiful thing about repatterning, as I said before, is we don't have to fix anything. Once you know, oh, wow, I really see these dynamics playing out in the family and I see that they don't work. Now you can remove each of those patterns mm -hmm. and you will naturally step into a different triangle. Mm -hmm. And that's such a, the, what I call the pattern maker triangle of wisdom, compassion, and trust. Mm -hmm. And those three roles, instead of pulling people apart, they actually pull people together. Mm -hmm. It's like the wisdom to be able to say, hey, I see a pattern arising. I'm going to own that. The compassion to see that it's just a pattern and that, you know, everybody has patterns and it's not yeah. personal. Mm -hmm. And then the trust that once that pattern gets removed, a new pattern will take its place, which will take care of everybody. Right. That makes sense. That makes so much sense. Um, Cause it's kind of like, once you have that, like once the, I guess, once the mom understands, well, once dad understands why mom is doing this and why mom understands why dad's doing this, it's kind of like that compassion starts there, which will kind of like break that as well. Yeah. Kind of, and I right. mean, you know, like it's interesting because patterns, as I said, they get created in our youth and in our childhood. And then we just continue to run that old obsolete pattern right. over and over again. So mom isn't meaning to rescue. She just has a pattern that rescues. Dad isn't meaning to persecute. He just has a pattern that persecutes, mm -hmm. right? So, or vice versa, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so to know that is like, oh, okay, they're, they're not trying to get on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, or they're not trying to go at each other. Um, right. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They just so, have a pattern. Um, I, I heard somewhere, it was another podcast that you did um, where you kind of, you know, a lot of people are always, or well, the internet really is into this whole inner child thing, which is very much so true. And like, you know, the patterns from your childhood, you know, not bringing them or like, like going back that way to rearrange that. Um, but sometimes, you know, you don't remember them or sometimes it's not even that, that case in a sense. Um, so definitely speak to that. Cause I think that people are definitely stuck in, in that lexicon. And I know that there's like more to it. One of the key things when I was back in my old days, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to deal with everything through mindset, one of the things that I was repeatedly told to do was to find the originating incident, right? So, you know, I had a problem and people would mm -hmm. say, well, what happened in your childhood? What, what right. caused that pattern? And I'd be going- it's Like I typical psych like a psychologist question that everyone thinks, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'd be going, but I don't remember, right? So now, Penny, I had two problems. I had the problem that I was currently facing and I had the problem of not remembering the originating incident and this, mm -hmm drove me crazy because I thought, well, how can I fix what I'm going through today if I can't remember what was happening back then? Mm -hmm. Forget it. 
way too yeah. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You don't Sorry need enough to. to deal with right now. <laughs> exactly. Let's stick to today, shall we? Let's not worry mm-hmm. about the past. I mean, if somebody remembers the past, great. We can repattern that too. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't remember the past. I'm just saying if you don't, take a deep breath because it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. The pattern is arising here now. The pattern is that intertwined physical sensation, emotion, thought. That you can identify here. You don't Mm -hmm. need to know where the pattern originated. You can change it starting here now, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, interestingly, when we change a pattern, it ripples all the way into our past and changes our entire relationship with our past anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Because that past is also arising now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like we tend to think of the past as if it actually happened. But really, it's the memory of that past that is showing up here now. Right. And if that memory is is um, here now, then it would be rearranged with because it's with that with the rearranging of the pattern. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. You yeah. got it. You got yes. it. Right. So, yeah, so we have a lot of exactly. We have a lot of creatives that listen to the podcast, um, especially young ones with new ideas, new projects, things that people have not even developed before. Very innovative. And one thing that I um, have seen is a lot of procrastination, like kind of masked as like perfectionism. Um, So I'd love for you to speak to that. And then also um, I think that people procrastinate because they think that they might fail at it or, you know, um, or if the idea is too big. So kind of speak to that and like just different ways that quick ways that people can combat that procrastination who have those big, you know, creative projects and things like that. Yeah, oh, this is great. Um, you might need to have me back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big topic. I, I teach, you know, I, I'm what is called a thought leader, right? right. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you said before, I'm, I'm recognized award winner. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason that I am is because I have found a way to tap into my right hemisphere of my brain. Mm. Um, and I'll just explain what I just said. I have found a way to tap into the vast warehouse within my brain, being everything that, that I have seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched, all the sense data is stored in the unconscious regions of the brain. When we know how to remove the existing pattern, our brain will go there to form a new pattern. Mm-hmm. Have I lost you? Or does that well, make so, sense? Okay, so with the so with the, so the, so the right is the unconscious? So no, not quite. Okay. So the right and the left hemisphere is a little tricky to understand, okay. but I'm going to use Ian McGilchrist. If anybody wants to know the difference between the hemispheres, Ian McGilchrist has a fantastic book out there. It's called The Master and His Emissary, mm-hmm. The Divided Brain and the Making of the Western World. Okay. Mm-hmm. But basically what he has discovered is that the right hemisphere is our present moment now hemisphere. It's absorbing Mm -hmm. everything that's happening here now, okay? It's passing that information over to the left hemisphere where the left hemisphere divides and separates and informs you of what is going on now. So the left hemisphere holds the language center of the brain. Mm -hmm. So the right hemisphere is present, it's always present. The left hemisphere pulls information from your past, pulls that patterning we can right. to interpret what's going on in the now based on what it knows from the past. Okay, okay. Right. got Everybody it. Got, got it. That. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ideally, that left brain pattern is passed back to the right for context, for integration into mm-hmm. what's going on. And you, you are supposed to be relating to what's actually going on, ideally. But over the generations, the corpus callosum, the band of tissue that Mm -hmm. divides the two hemispheres has been thickening, okay? And in that thickening, that information is not being passed back as readily anymore. So the left isn't sharing that information with the right, okay? Questions about that? Okay, Okay. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think about it. In In a creative brain, you need the present moment you need to be constantly aware of what's actually going on in the moment and absorbing all of that material because the present moment is always in flow right right and it's there that all the new information arises right what is perfectionism perfectionism is when we use only left brain patterns and we just keep spinning around inside the left hemisphere perfecting, reusing, recycling what we already know. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Making sense? Uh-huh. When we are able to, to let that go and pass that information back to the right, the right is able to bring context. And in that context, things show up newly and that perfectionism disappears. Nature is right. perfect. Mm-hmm. Nature doesn't give a hoot about perfection. In fact, she goes, let make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. And in that mistake, she creates perfection. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Ideally, that's what human beings are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be creative beings, right? And in that, we need to let go of that left brain patterning that is constantly creating the familiar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so do you so would you say that we as creatives stay either stuck mainly in the right side of the brain like we're mainly just because some some creatives you know they're just in flow they're in whatever but nothing is act, actually getting made or or like executed um, okay. and then you have some of them who they say in this side of the brain where you have all of all of your lists all of, all of these things but it's not in like so basically you're saying we need to make do a better job at making them coincide you got it it's the okay. it's the whole brain that is the way to happiness joy creativity okay mm-hmm. so it's not that the left brain is bad and the right brain is right. good. it's that when we strengthen the communication between these hemispheres that's where you get into creativity perfectionism is when we get trapped in the left hemisphere la la woo woo mm-hmm. not actually creating anything is when we get trapped in the right hemisphere our mm-hmm. job is to build that communication and you mentioned i think it's called the corpus callosum in the middle you said it's getting thicker over time like with evolution with evolution yeah as yeah. of like when do you think is this like a new thing like with social media or it's just a uh, no i mean the the we become left brain dominant when you look throughout history and am and gilchrist actually does this in this book and he looks back all the way through history and he can see how the left brain has become more and more dominant wow. and all the problems in today's world are formed by this left brain dominance mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. it's not again it's not that the left brain is bad or wrong it's right. that without the right brain's integration it has no context that's what's happening mm-hmm. and you can see it like things are taken out of context that personal that conspiracy theories all of that is because it's lacking the context in right. today's environment right that's good that's good so what are some things people can do to um you know activate the right more and integrate those like, like yeah, any, right. yeah 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 um well the four-step repatterning technique okay, yeah. is mm-hmm. actually building that communication that's yes actually i'll definitely doing. have the book link in the bio for everyone and everything like that for sure yeah yes. um other things you can do, you know what, Jill Bolte Taylor, I, I understand she has a new book out. Jill Bolte Taylor is a neuroscientist. She had a stroke in her left hemisphere. And so she was operating only through the right hemisphere, which when you, if you've ever seen her TED talk, it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. I understand she has a book out too, which also has a technique to rebuild the hemisphere. I haven't read it yet, but mm-hmm. that's somewhere so else. Well, I'll put it in there as well as a resource. For sure. And lastly, um, I saw that you mentioned like money patterns, which is one thing I think that young people are definitely need to break as we get into adulting and things like that, learning how to spend our money, knowing, especially as black creatives, knowing our worth and how to ask for more money. That's a huge thing right now. Um, So can you speak to that as well? And then we'll start to wrap it up for sure. Yeah. So money is a really interesting pattern. If you look at money, it is one of the only, I think, I'm not, I'm going to say the only, but let's say one of the only few things on this planet that doesn't actually have anything in reality in nature that relates to it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you look at a tree, yes, you have a pattern for tree, okay, that's arising in your brain, but there is a physical tree out there. When you think about money, it used to be attached to something physical. It used to be attached to gold or silver, right? And then to currency. Today, what is it? It's like on the computer. (laughs) It's like crypto. (laughs) Exactly. It's nothing, right? And yet, because it's a left brain pattern, because it's nothing, we make it into everything. Does that make sense? Right. Once, once something actually doesn't have something in reality in nature, like I'm holding up a cup, right? There's a real cup here. Yeah. I have, I'm limited by this cup in order to call it a cup. You're not limited with money for anything. So right. money becomes my value. Money becomes self-worth. Money becomes 
um, success, money becomes status, money becomes mm. all of power. It becomes all of these different things because it doesn't actually relate to anything. Mm -hmm. But once you know that penny, you got your power, right? Money's a pattern. I can deconstruct that pattern. If that pattern is not working for me, if I'm saying, oh my gosh, I'm not successful because I don't have money. And I know that money is a pattern. I can remove that relationship between success and money. Mm -hmm. Now you'll show up successful without money. You don't right. need money to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Money is status. Okay, I got it. I'm feeling like I'm down here and this person's up there because they have more money. Or getting, treated, or getting treated as such, you know, in America, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So now you get to own that as your pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Remove that pattern. Oh, yeah, knowing that that's not true. Well, yeah, or it, it is true, but knowing that it's a pattern that's not really like real, right? Uh, right. So, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought up truth because there are facts. Yes, people treat people lesser than if they don't have money. That's a fact, right? But that doesn't have to be your truth. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Mm -hmm you it, it's who you're being in the face of that that matters right and, and that and what you pattern. think of and what you think of yourself do you adopt yeah. that do you believe that because they're telling you that great now you've got a pattern in your brain that's believing that you get to remove that right right and you don't now have like it doesn't matter yeah. what they think that makes sense it makes so much sense okay so the last question i do always want to know um for behavioral experts uh, mental health um people psychologists who are really into this how do they kind of operate in the in the real world like with their friends and stuff like once you like know that like know these things about patterns and like do you call like it's kind of hard not to call your friends out and you're like if you just do this so I really always want to know how do you guys like cope with that because I can even find myself you know being like girl you can work out if you just do this so how do you how have you learned to live in this world with all of this in your brain <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love that question so a couple of things um if I, I as I said before I work with couples if they ever say you should go repattern I always flip it around to say no 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 you need to go repattern yeah <laughs> because the pattern is always arising inside the person it's not actually to do with what the other person is doing mm -hmm. so that's the first thing if I ever think to myself that person should go repattern I go oh okay Adele go repattern you, oh, you, you gotta, gotta do that right I gotta do that work right right Let's, they get to show up brand new because I'm changing my pattern not because gotcha. they changed. Gotcha. That's so, so that's good. That's thing. so good. Um, the second thing is, it, you know, oftentimes we're accused of being something. So we get thrown a label at, or we're told, you know, even you are such a F know it all. Whatever, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. So at that point, here's or through, what I through or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're mm -hmm. so woo woo. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so the best response to that is, Thank you. I didn't realize that. I will take care of it. Mm. What am I saying? Okay. What am I saying? Because it's really key. They're, they're telling me what their pattern is saying about me. They're not talking about me at all. Mm -hmm. I know that between me and them, there lives their pattern. And I know that that's what they're interacting with. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I get to do is I get to step back from what they're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. And all right. Now, if I'm triggered, if what they said, Adele, you're so woo woo. And I go, wow, that really stung. Great. I'm triggered. That's my pattern. So what am I saying when I say thank you? I didn't realize that I'll take care of that. And I'm saying it sincerely. I'm not being I'm not being um, facetious. Right. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually saying is thank you for showing me one of my patterns. I will go away and repattern that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So great. This is why ownership of the pattern becomes so powerful. Right. It's like nobody can say anything. It's right. Like, oh, okay. Or okay. if you if you did know, like let's say somebody says, "Gosh, you're so I don't know," and it's something that I believe myself to be, and I know about that. Thank you. I didn't know about that. I am working on that. Yeah. But, but thanks for like, own, to take ownership of it and keep it and keep it moving. Because it's just a pattern anyway. It's just a pattern. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's exactly. just a pattern. They're not saying anything about me. If they are saying anything about me, I know it's a pattern. I can change that. So, mm -hmm. you know, so full power, you get it all. You get to own everything as yours, which is amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. I love that. 
I love that. So last thing I always end with um, my guests letting me know like what's been bringing them peace of mind or like whether it's like this week or what normally brings you peace of mind. Um, just so you just go for it. You can take the question however you want. Well, I always repent in twice a day, two times a day, whether I need it or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that keeps me in that aligned with the present mm -hmm. moment. That keeps me tapping to the right hemisphere. Um, what really brings me peace of mind, though, is honestly creating. I um, My brain is just creative firing all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really content in that creative space. Mm -hmm. And um, but Love but that. thank goodness, having said that, Penny, it's because I man, I repatterned my perfectionist pattern. Yeah, that's the only reason because before creativity for me was hell. Mm -hmm. I'll just be honest. Yeah, because I was always like, Oh, my gosh, that's so bad. And I was beating myself. I like it. Yeah, I used to like that so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. So once I removed that. that, then it's repat. Like, so it's like, re so repatterning is what brings you peace of mind, which is great. <laughs> there you <laughs> it's go. Great, it's a great ending. <laughs> it's go. actually perfect. Thank you so much. Can you let the people know where to find you? I'm definitely going to put it in the bio as well. Um, but just like, like your social media handles and anything else you would like to. Yeah, like just if mm -hmm. you Google my name, Adele Spragan, you'll find everything. AdeleSpragan.com is the website where you can you can get a free copy of my book there. Just go into book. All I ask is that people pay for the shipping. I'll mm -hmm. send you an autograph copy. Oh, dope. Um, yeah, there's a 30 day free trial of my member site. If anybody wants to just try it out and give it a Super try. Super dope. Yes. You can get everything in there. Um, we operate on what I call what is called the optimal payment plan. So one thing that when when COVID hit, Penny, I, I'm a little slow. OK, when COVID hit. I would really woke up to the world's distribution, the wealth distribution on the planet. And I really mm -hmm. saw, wow, this isn't working. And so I did what I always do. I repented it. And what came to us as a team was the optimal payment plan. So there's, a, there's prices set for everything that I offer on the website. But if that's not within somebody's means, there's a drop down menu and they just select that's the price so that good. Is within their means. And and there's no judgment. There's no like, you know, I don't even see what people right. do. I don't care. It doesn't right. matter to me. That's great. That's <laughs> yeah. so good. Because it's like sometimes people don't have access as a main thing. They don't have access to these things that can make them better. That will, you know, have them having a better, like more abundant in money, more abundant in wellness. It's just an access thing. You got it. So, you got it. And there's yeah. full scholarships too. If somebody can't oh, afford great. anything, then it's like just just reach out. We've got that's full so amazing. So. Thank you so much. It was yeah. like a. It was so great talking to you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Penny. Yes, thank you for thank having you. me. Yes. Have a good. Is it evening or night there? I'm not sure what it is. But uh, evening. Evening. Yes. Have a good yes. evening. Thank you thank so much. You. And I'll um send over everything like the YouTube and everything like that to um I think his name I forgot what, exactly what his name was Carl. 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 Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Penny. Okay. Bye. Bye.